Like, happy to be here, my friend happy Art. Happy to be here with you, my friend I'm Adam, I'm Adam and yes. this is Art, for those who don't know. So. The Adam and Art <laughs> Hour is back. It is. It yes. is back, and we're very happy to be it here. It looks different, but it's going to be just as tasty. I know. We're, yeah. we're way more upscale now. You yeah, know? We've got an actual, this. we've got cameras looking at us. We're in we the same us. space. Yeah, exactly. We're in the same space. So. <laughs> <laughs> it was It was how many years of we've never uh, even seen each other's faces. Exactly, person. right? Yeah. Two or three years of just in the computer box. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For those that don't know, uh, Art and I met on... Uh, how did we we met someone connected us because I was on a TV show working. Greg, it was Greg. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Bless you, Greg, if you're listening. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, um, yeah, there was just an introduction where um, uh, Greg was uh, a parent of someone who my son and daughter were involved in this like skating, skateboarding, roller skating group, and. Um, we were just shooting the crap one night, uh, one day while the kids were skating at one of those, you know, I think it was the Denver Skate Park or something like that. And um, and he was like, oh, you're into mindfulness. You you should talk to this guy, Adam, that I work with. He's a young guy. You, you, I think you'd like him. And here we are. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And we, uh, <laughs> we spent many years on Zoom meetings. Indeed. Doing Indeed. doing a whole podcast. And it, that podcast did really well, actually. It, really, it, was, it was a lot, lot of fun. fun and mm-hmm. we kind of ended up, you know, things happen in business and that that's something I want to talk about today is yes. kind of, you know, as, as it happens to a lot of us, we, we veer off the path. I mean, I guess it's hard to veer off the path because all of it is the path. But... <laughs> right. There, there is no path, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But with this podcast, the, the idea and what we're trying to accomplish is to help people, um, healing and living through, mindfulness meditation and living the middle way which Mm -hmm. the middle way is in buddhism you know known as the middle path Mm -hmm. Um, but it could be any way you think about it's it's living in between it's not living Mm -hmm. on those extremes it's Mm -hmm. not well black and white it's not Mm -hmm. red or blue it's Mm -hmm. you know it's it's learning how to be in that middle ground and talking about ways to deal with things like trauma with uh, our daily lives Mm -hmm. stress and all that and you're a. Why don't you introduce yourself? Who, right. who, who is Art? Who, who right. are we sitting with right well, now? We'll, Art, we'll talk about that. <laughs> Art Burns is someone who uh, struggled for a long time to find the middle way. And you know, I just wanted to say before we get into that that you know that that whole idea of the middle way to me also means you know being flex uh, adaptable being being flexible and soft and 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 pliable. So with something like this podcast, you know, we you know it's 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 so so much our tendency, and this is going to loop into my story, I promise, but uh, but it's so much our tendency as human beings to say, no, 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 it has to be this certain way, you know, and, and if it's either that or it's nothing or it's, you know, it's ruined, it's over, whatever. But But when we live our lives without that sort of, you know, rigidity, you know, we find that, that, no, actually, there are many ways that we can sort of, you know, walk, and, and, you know, as I say, there's, you know, we could say there's no path, or we could say that we make the path as we go. And so anytime that we think that there's some, you know, preconceived notion or predetermined way that something's supposed to be, that is often the sign that we got to take a breath and, and, and recheck, you know, and, and sort of return back to that that window that I look at it, but, you know, that that middle path, that middle way. So anyway, um, this is something that I consider the most important uh, lesson of my whole life. I mean, you know, my whole life was based on the opposite of everything I just said. You know, it was, it was all about, you know, the grasping and the and the, the striving and the, you know, so I grew up in a um, uh, corporate advertising world. You know, think of like Mad Men in the year 2000, mm-hmm. right? It yeah. was, um, you know, I had the expense account. I used to, you know, fly first class to Europe. It was like a, you know, real big, you know, advertising executive life, you know. Um, and it was filled moment by moment with this idea that things just had to be a certain way. Things had to be, there had to be a certain amount of money. There had to be a certain type of car. There had to be a certain type of, you know, even the restaurants that you ate at it or where you went out with, you know, with your friends to, to bars or clubs or whatever, that anything outside a certain, you know, structure was basically failure. And I, and I lived, you know, and it's one thing to look back and say, oh yeah, we can all feel that way. And, you know, I'm sure we all do feel that way. But, but when we zoom in on it on a moment by moment level, that's where it was like, I look back and I just realized how much, you know, just stress and tension I lived with just 100% of the time. And so anyway, so this went on for many, many, many years. And, um, 
about 10 years ago, I'm 55 now, so about 10 years ago, I discovered the practices of mindfulness. And, and the first thing, the first really you know, dash of cold water in my face kind of lesson from, from mindfulness, it's such a like duh moment at this point to even say this, but the idea of acceptance, the idea to be able to now, when we say acceptance, it's very important to understand that we don't say like not, it's not acquiescence. It's not, it's not like, you know, oh, well, nothing's going to ever get better or anything like that. But yet it's, it's instead of that, it's the, the acceptance that this is what is. And if, if anybody could learn anything in their lives, that is the, the most important lesson that you can learn, in my opinion. Because then, once we accept who it is, where it is, how it is, why it is, that's when we can start to make significant changes. Mm. You know, and so ten years ago, that's what I started doing, and I became um, actually a little bit longer than ten years. Today is the thirteenth anniversary of my becoming sober. Um, so, yeah, thank you, thank you. There, that's. Uh, I think I'm on uh, four days. <laughs> <laughs> I keep going, buddy. <laughs> but I got sober. I quit smoking cigarettes. I, you know, changed my diet. I changed everything. Changed. Once I started to be able to accept me and to accept the moment. Hmm. And from there, I've gotten to the point where I, I, I never thought I could be as happy as I am now. I never thought, and, and it's not because I don't have the fancy car. I don't have the big house. I don't go yeah. out to fancy restaurants anymore, but I'm happier now than I ever was with any of that stuff. And it's not to say that that stuff you know, you can, you can be happy and live that kind of life. I do believe that. But, but for me, it's been, you know, the, the journey inside, right? The journey to really understand myself, because that's really the, the key about the acceptance is that, is that it allows us to really know ourselves. Mm -hmm. And, and once we know ourselves now, we can, again, make significant changes. We can make choices that are, you know, beneficial to us and beneficial to everyone else around us. So anyway, I've took a, a lot of time there. No, that's good. I got, I have more questions for you. So <laughs> well, shoot, before, man. well, it's, it's, it's interesting hearing about, I resonate. So I kind of know that part of your story, sure. right? I, when I met you, you told me about, Hey, I was in, I was in the advertising world. I was, mm. I had the private flight, or the first class flights uh. and the, all these things. And, you know, I met you what five years ago? About five years more. ago, yeah. yeah. And yeah, like five or six, I'm yeah. in my twenties. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> everything you're talking about, I'm like, art. I want that. <laughs> and and, and uh, still to this day, it's, yeah. um, So it's interesting. It's it's something that I've always gone back and forth of. I've mm -hmm. I've said. I actually remember this. I was in therapy, and I said this to a therapist. I said. There's two atoms. There's mm -hmm. the atom that wants to run away mm -hmm. to the monastery, mm -hmm. and there's the atom that wants everything, mm -hmm. like wants the private mm -hmm. jet, wants the trophy wife, wants the big mm -hmm. house, wants the nice mm -hmm. car, wants to be able to do whatever. Mm -hmm. And I sway so hard. What mm -hmm. happens is I work so hard for this. Mm -hmm. Most of the time you end up disappointed with it, right? Mm -hmm. Especially I want it now, right? Yeah, we all right. want it now. Right. I don't, uh, my problem is the patience with it. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. instead of that, it takes a long time to get this it unless does. you're a trust fund kid or something right. like that. And right. Like it's just the, the moral of the story. You gotta, mm -hmm. you gotta keep working for it. And what happens is I burn myself out or I find I get something. I find that it's not making me happy and I sit and I mm -hmm. meditate and or I have this like profound experience and I turn down and I'm like, oh, you know what? I just, I need to go to the monastery now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, That's like, right. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like it, there's like part of me is like, oh, if only I'd just run away and like, if only I, not run away, but it is like, if only mm -hmm. if I just give up all of this. Mm-hmm. Then I could find the happiness there. Mm -hmm. But it's funny because that's almost the same exact thing that's, yeah, as right. saying, oh, if only I had the cars and right. all this stuff. Exactly. You're so right. that's where, for me, talking about finding that middle way is very important. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, that's a perfect illustration. Absolutely. I'm currently sitting in that position of where you were mm -hmm. 10 years ago, yep. wherever it was. Yep. I'm currently sitting in, I run a business. Mm -hmm. I've had decent success with my business. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of downside. I, I say success, mm -hmm. but compared to most things, it's, it's success. I, I now, I have a nice car. I mm -hmm. went and bought a nice car. I live in a pretty decent house here. It's a really nice house. house. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, it's a rental, but you know, yeah. it's not mine, but um, I have a beautiful wife. Like mm -hmm. it's like all mm -hmm. these things. Mm -hmm. I, I got all this, 
And this last month was one of the most depressing mm. times of my entire life. Mm. I, I literally became insanely depressed. Mm. Um, and it's like, I'm getting all these things. Now, granted, some of that had to do with some financial stuff that was mm-hmm. happening in the business. Sure. A lot of it did. Sure. But what I'm also realizing is like, it, even during those times, so when the financial stuff and all that comes, all these hardships are coming, my car doesn't save me. Right. My right. my golf clubs don't save me. My my exactly. custom mountain bikes don't save me. Right. None of that that like supposed to be like, oh, this will make me happy. And granted, I can right. go out and do something and it mm-hmm. gives me that little boost for a little bit. Maybe. But internally, mm-hmm. I'm suffering. Like mm-hmm. there, there's this true suffering in there mm-hmm. of like, well, what do you mean? Like, like it was in your goal book <laughs> 10 years ago to have everything you have right. now. Right. Why are you not happy? Yeah. Why am I not happy? Yeah. yeah. Why am I why am I literally struggling so hard? And it's like, mm-hmm. well. For one, my meditation has been lower. There you go. There you <laughs> my, go. my mindfulness practice has been lower. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm focused on what I don't have versus mm-hmm. what I do have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's really taken a toll. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's, it's creating a lot of stress almost. So what, what I'm in right now is almost that pivotal moment of where I think you discovered. And that was a big influence for me to bring this podcast back and to say, you know what? One of the most peaceful times of my life was when we were doing the podcast, mm-hmm. when we were teaching classes, yeah. when we were doing that. And yeah. it's like, and it wasn't even, I think there was the part where we're, it was like very rewarding to have people be like, oh, this is really helping me in my life. But sure. it's like, I almost had to live that life, right? You have to yeah. live that life to yeah. teach it unless you're just, I'm sure there's people that don't, right? Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that feels kind of fraudulent or it something, does, right? It does, it yeah, does. You feel like you're, okay. you're the Joel, Joel Osteen's in there. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, We can go down exactly. a different path. But, well, it's, you know, yeah. kind of connected, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I'm in that path. Mm-hmm. And so I want to talk about, I want to get I want to get deeper here. Yeah, this let's is, do it. I, I want people to know, like, you gave me a base of who art is. Mm. But let's go back. What made art art now what were like as deep as open as you want to get yeah what is your story up until now yeah yeah wow that's great so that? <laughs> like yeah, obviously sure. a, no, no, a I'm summarized fine. version i'm of fine it. no no totally but, but totally. what is no, I'm, it what, i'm good yeah because everyone who lands on this point mm-hmm. you don't land at mindfulness and meditation by sure. having a good life right, <laughs> I, right. I, I, good's wrong word but by right. having an easy life right, right. Uh, with the possible exception of like your kids and my kids right yes. like our kids are going to grow up more mindful because we are mindful yes. you know not yes. necessarily that i teach my kids mindful. they would never they would never allow me to teach them anything, <laughs> much less mindfulness. I could barely teach my kid math, but, uh, but, um, but, but yeah. So, so I say that for the reason that you know my home life as a child was completely like there was no mindfulness whatsoever, you know, and, and, and it's interesting because I know that, you know, I know a little bit about your um, early childhood and, and how, and there's a really, really stark difference, you see, because I grew up, you know, my, so, okay, try to summarize this as quickly Mm -hmm. as I can. So my father was a, um, his brother was a cop. His other brother was like a, you know, truck driver, uh, his father and his grandfather and all his uncles and all his cousins and everybody was blue collar, blue collar, blue collar. Right. Somehow when my father was in his, like probably about your age, his mid twenties up to 30 somewhere, um, he stumbled into this, um, uh, opportunity in the um, you know sort of printing and pre-press uh, um, industry in New York. Okay, now you're talking about you know early '70s, right? And you know these companies were just making you know the, the stuff that you could do on a computer now with Photoshop, right? Mm-hmm. Used to take a whole factory of people yeah. doing it, you know, manually on on tables, cutting out you know masks and stuff to change the colors and in, in pictures and stuff like that. And so these guys were, I mean, the owners of these companies were driving Rolls Royces. They wow. had you know they had apartments that they just you know just parked you know million dollars to just have an empty apartment, you know, like just ridiculous amounts of money. And my father somehow, you know, some shamrock luck of the Irish kind of thing, he hooked up with this, with a, a, one of the owners of one of these companies, and he just like overnight became a millionaire. And, and you know, it wasn't the kind of thing where he, you know, studied to do something or got a mm-hmm. degree or, you yeah. know, some path. He just stumbled into it, literally just stumbled into it. Typical nouveau riche, like, and then it was, you know, and then... 
the and so the, the moral of this <laughs> thank you for this therapy yeah. session by the way <laughs> the moral yes. of this is that is or or the the really important conclusion of this is that is that once my father reached that level of success financial success it was that was absolutely the baseline of what he expected of me mm. right and so from that moment on like like and you know, there's also some weird trauma stuff that also went on. But this is I'm not going to get too into that stuff because this is really the per- pertinent part. That that you know, like even like sitting around listening to music was completely unacceptable, hmm. right? Like just that was he literally would call me stupid for that. Like you got to be doing something while you're listening to music because you're not going to be you know the financial success. So the the thing is that like you know again the moral of this the conclusion of this is that you know what he just kind of stumbled into <laughs> right he was demanding of me you know to make my whole life this mm. right to make my whole life being financially successful right and so and this gets back to what i was talking about with acceptance right that you know once that became the sort of parameter of who i was allowed to be right I was no longer myself. Like that was, I, I didn't know art. I, art wasn't even in the picture anymore. It was this art senior's son that had to, you know, like it was, it, I wasn't allowed to be me, right? And of course, now this started when I was, you know, 10, 12 years old and went all the way through college. And that's how I got into uh, the advertising business was through him. I worked with him, like for him, you know, and then went into, you know, tried to get away from him, (laughs) you know, got into like the executive positions, but it was still like, you know, he was a very well-known guy in that community. So it was like, I was always art son. I was always art junior, you know, and it was like, you know, again, the sense of self was not there. My mm. whole self was was revolved around what I had or or how I looked or where I bought my clothes or what kind of car I drove. And so I was literally imprisoned by it. It was, it was, you know, so I think it's like it's completely the opposite route that you and I have taken here, but but it's the it's the same thing. So then we lose our self, right? We lose who it is that we are. And that's what I mean by acceptance. Once when we can accept things exactly how they are, this is it. It's, it's, there's no remorse. There's no wishing. There's no would have, should have, could have. It's this is now we can find ourselves. Now we can allow ourself, our true self to be heard and to be, be who we are and to, to become us if that makes sense. So is that deep enough for you? It's, it's deep. It's deep. It's deep. It's very deep. <laughs> it's so crazy because I guess now I need to explain my side because indeed <laughs> they're so opposite, but the same, right? but ended up in the same, it's like amazing. I ended up with the same. It's so, amazing. so just, to, just a background, please. We'll, we'll, we'll start. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to kind of go with whatever comes up to my head here because it's, I'm like, I can't, I'm like, oh, there's this, this, and this. But so my background, my parents divorced when I was six months old. Mm. I ended up eventually living, I think my mom ended up with custody custody of me. Um, I will get to the dark, dirty stuff. Mm -hmm. I was abused by my stepfather Mm -hmm. very physically for, it was, I don't know, six to seven years Mm. until I was about eight years old, Um, daily Bad stuff, mm-hmm. just very physical, very bad. Um, I ended up, my mom finally uh, what, worked up the courage, whatever you want to mm-hmm. call it, uh, divorced him and sent me to live with my dad. Mm-hmm. Best thing she could have ever done for me. Mm-hmm. So end up living with my dad. And at none of this time, I, through the childhood, um, during the years of abuse, all that, we were very poor, like mm-hmm. very, very poor. Mm-hmm. Like, we, I remember putting pans under our, yeah. our ceilings because the the uh when it rained in texas like you you know it, it's flooding inside your house and mm-hmm. you hear you're sleeping and you hear pots and pans ding ding <laughs> like, yeah. like to that point and then i go to live with my dad who's he's a little more middle class like we mm-hmm. lived in telluride which is a okay. nice area mm-hmm. but we lived in telluride like in you know shared apartments type the other thing. side of the tracks yeah yeah, yeah exactly right, right. um but it's still a nice area he ran a construction business nice. and was doing decent for himself uh, but it was never a lot of money. And mm-hmm. then, you know, 2008 hit, he suffered with that. He ended up becoming law enforcement. Just like money still was never that much of a thing. Mm-hmm. I'm dealing with past childhood trauma mm-hmm. of, mm-hmm. you know, uh, 
the abuse and all that stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I eventually, very young age, I start smoking weed. Mm -hmm. Um, I start drinking by seventh grade. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) Time goes on and I'm a full-blown alcoholic by sophomore year of think of high school. It was Mm -hmm. like sophomore into junior year of high school. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Junior year of high school is really, really bad. You know, I'm experimenting with drugs, um, but I'm using alcohol to essentially mask depression. Sure. I have a whole nother story where I had a bad experience on um, an hallucinogenic and Mm -hmm. it triggered what I thought was actually triggered by the hallucinogenic, but was in hindsight was triggered from years of abuse (laughs) was a, an anxiety disorder. And Mm -hmm. I developed what was called health anxiety. Mm. Health anxiety is where you literally convince you it's a hypochondriac you mm-hmm. you convince yourself one that mine was that i thought i was going to have a heart attack mm-hmm. i was 16 17 years old mm. and was full-blown convinced i was going to have a heart attack wow. or a stroke at any moment like wow. this is i lived my life like that wow. your body starts kicking into overdrive because sure. you're it's basically fight or flight consistently absolutely, absolutely. so I start, the only thing I find that helps me with that, like most people who mask things, um, is drugs and alcohol. Mm-hmm. So specifically alcohol for me. Sure. I start abusing alcohol like it's my day job. <laughs> like I'm going yeah. to school drunk. Like wow. I'm, you know, we're making cocktails before we walk out of class. Like, and, and I was the guy, we'd go around after a party. This is too much info, but <laughs> I'd walk around with a cup. <laughs> after a party the next morning and I would walk around, you know, cause high school girls aren't drinking beers and yeah, things. So yeah, I yeah. would pour all the beers into what was called Adam's cup. And oh, I would, gosh. Cause we lived at this party house. It was bad. Um, <laughs> and you know, I was doing things people were doing in college yeah. during high school. Yeah, like right, I, I was, right. you know, and it, it was bad. And so that, <coughs> that caused a lot of issues, obviously. Um, Indeed. a lot of relationship issues with, uh, you know, high school relationships sure. and other things. And then carried on to my young adulthood. And, I also craved, it was like almost the opposite, Mm. is like I wanted to fill all those gaps with things. It was like I, and it was interesting because my dad never cared about things, like Mm -hmm. not really, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Like they never had nice cars and they had Mm -hmm. houses, like things, but it was never like, it didn't interest him the way that it interests me. And neither Mm -hmm. of my parents were like that. Um, And I somehow became obsessed with it. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. It was like, this is how I'm going to be happy is I'm going to, mm-hmm. I'm going to be successful. And it was very interesting because I did so bad at like the actual academic work of high school and I was ditching and all mm-hmm, that stuff. Mm-hmm. But if you put me as soon as I got out of high school and it was like, Oh, well, I can be in sales. I started right. sales. It was like, I was so hyper-focused on mm-hmm. it. Right. Because I was like, I'm going to be that millionaire. I'm going to do this. Mm-hmm. And it was like almost trying somehow to make up for years of sure. just lost connection to the self. Right. Absolutely. So what ended up happening and I've actually just realized this over the last year or two, is I had put all my self-worth into achieving things or what I was good at, right? Right, right. So what, you know, I was a good skier, I was a good mountain Mm -hmm. biker, I was a good businessman, any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. All of my worth comes from that. There you go. And actually where it came out most is in my golf game. Mm -hmm. And my friend (laughs) said it to me, and it was was very interesting. He He said, Adam, you know, you don't have to be good to be worthy. Like it, awesome. you're, you put so much of your self worth wow. because we'd be playing a golf game and I'm out there and if I have a bad shot, I'm like, you know, yeah. so mad at myself. And it's mm-hmm. like, and it struck with me. I was like, you know how much yeah. self worth I put into like those moments, <laughs> like mm-hmm. being like that. Mm-hmm. So anyway, carry on. Eventually, <clears throat> alcohol is much less of an issue for me now. I don't use it to mask. I, I drink every once in a while, very mm-hmm. lightly. Like mm-hmm. it's a complete, I don't use drugs, but mm-hmm. I'm, I'm almost sober. But it took many, many years. My problem still is I'm in that point where I'm still trying to let go of my self-worth right. being associated right. to my business for yep. one. Mm-hmm. I, I think... I'm trying to let go and say, you know, I have to have this business. I, I've actually, I started off filmmaking and playing with my camera as a way to make money. And I was so excited about it. It was so, th- you know, it was everything exciting about me is my passion. And now it's like, that doesn't even matter to me anymore. It's like, just as long as we're making money. It's right. like, oh, well now we got to, like, I'm doing all these corporate shoots and all these things <clears> that, <throat> you know, they fill my pocket. Yeah. They don't fill the soul at yeah, all. Right. right. And so right. I'm sitting there and when I reached out to you and said, we got to get this podcast yeah. going. going. <laughs> Because life, I, I, I'm, I'm an artist trying to be a mm, businessman. That's it. Absolutely. <laughs> and I think mm-hmm. so many of us has to be. And like, I have a kid on the way. Mm-hmm. I have a family mm-hmm. to support, things like that. 
So I'm trying to draw that line yeah. of where do I make the money? Where do mm-hmm. I, you, you know what I mean? Because in, in Buddhism, there's what's called right livelihood. Mm-hmm. And that's part of the Eightfold Path. And I'll have mm-hmm. to go on a thing about that later. But in that, you whatever you do to make a living is aligned with yeah. something good, right? Yeah. You're not selling. Yeah. Uh, it's funny because in that, it's like uh, not selling firearms, drugs, or alcohol. <laughs> you're not murdering for it to yeah. make a living. You're not trafficking people or right. animals. Right. Um, very interesting. So I'm like, well, I'm not doing any of that. Yeah, <laughs> like, right. I guess in the sense I have made some alcohol commercials. So it's like I am selling alcohol in that mm-hmm. sense. Um, but man, am I unfulfilled right now. Yeah. Like yeah. It, it's interesting. And I'm trying to find that, that, uh, that come to Jesus, I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know mm-hmm. what it is. So it's really, really fascinating. I'm glad you brought up that, uh, that right livelihood aspect, you know, to me, you know, and I'm not, I'm not the practicing Buddhist here, right? I'm, I'm the guy who's more of the science guy, but, but to me, what I've always taken that as, as, you know, how I've interpreted that, um, you know, is is essentially, you know, does what I'm doing for a living create suffering, right? Mm-hmm. Does it hurt anyone, right? And it's easy to say, well, I'm not selling alcohol, I'm not selling cigarettes, I'm not doing this, that, the, but what about me? Mm-hmm. You know, am I hurting mm-hmm. me? That's an interesting right? perspective. Yeah. Wow. You know, and so <laughs> yeah. so a lot of times, you know, it's it's our own suffering that is what we need to look at, you yeah. know, in our livelihood, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't mean to throw the monkey wrench in the gears there. No, no. <laughs> but, uh, no. but, and then to me, that's where, you know, cause I, it's, it's funny cause you know, I, again, I, I came to this realization about, you know, I guess, you know, within the last 10 years or something like that, I, I came to the realization that, that it can't be about the money, right? It can't, like that was the problem, right? Like that was the, the, the sort of delusion that I was living under, but then it became, like not just like I started to you know about about five years ago I became yeah, a little over five years ago I became certified to teach mindfulness meditation right I went through about a six month you know certification process with a monk and you know did this whole thing it was it was really great and then I became attached to the idea like I'm gonna be you know Ram Dass yeah, you know I'm yeah. gonna you know they're ever you know millions of people are gonna follow me you know and that was just another form of the same thing, right? And so for then for three or four years, I just again lost myself in that. And so that's where I've realized that it's not, you know, it's it's not just the money and it's and it's not just the idea. It's it's well, it's it's similar to what you're talking about with the golf. Like like I feel like if I'm not someone who has millions of followers or I'm not someone who um you know has books published and appear in, you know, do public speaking or something like that, if I'm not all that, I'm not worthy. Right? Yeah. But then if I stop and I and I, you know, ask myself, like I just um I just actually started working with a, a new client and um, this client, you know, they, they're really, you know, kind of dealing with some very heavy anxiety and stuff like that and all the kind of stuff that, that mindfulness, you know, it's like, I'm not doing any magic. I'm just going to teach you the practices and these practices are going to make you more healthy, more, you know, it's, it's going to help, right? And she wanted to do it so badly, but like the finances and all this kind of stuff, well, it was a a previous client who had, who had, you know, recommended them to me. And this woman wound up staying on the phone with these, you know, her and her husband for like two hours one night, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, not letting them not come and work with me. And again, it's not about like, oh, look how great I am. But like, you know, I'm, I'm worried about 3 million people, but yet here's this one person who I had such, you know, who, who had such a, an impact through the work that I helped her with that, you know, she, she couldn't even not let her friend do it, you know? Yeah. So it was like, you know, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that, is that it's not about the 3 million people. It's about that, that, you know, again, if I can connect to myself, then I can connect to just, you know, a handful of people and, and helping them and, helping them helps me and helping them helps their families. And I watch them become happy. I watch them become satisfied in their lives and then ultimately become successful. You know, they've all, you know, gotten better jobs and they're all, you know, their kids are, you know, resolving issues and all this kind of stuff. And it's just like, you know, that's what matters, you know? And again, I think that's also, if we can say that right livelihood is, 
you know, not causing suffering, we could also say that right livelihood is about being of service and being helpful, mm. right? And, and you know, what we do is it, you know, now, now that doesn't mean that you can't do corporate, you know, videos, yeah. right? Like, like, you know, but that can also fuel something like what we're doing here, yeah. right? Which is also helping, you know? So mm. anyway, that's I'm off on a tangent here, but... No, no, I mean, that yeah. makes sense. The whole reason we have these cameras is because of the, <laughs> exactly. the business that I do, right? right. It's, right. it's, you have to look at it. It's, it's easy to get caught up and I, I get really caught up in like, oh, what I'm doing is not meaningful and all mm-hmm. this stuff. And it's like, well, is it helping you pay the bills that feed your family right. or is it helping you do this? And it's like, yes, like that, that is a lot, but there is that part of me that does want to be of service, that does mm-hmm. want to do something greater than me mm-hmm. essentially. Mm-hmm. And when you just, making corporate videos or things like that there's there's a part of you that's like oh like you really got to dig deep and Mm -hmm. i I think that's for anyone to say you know if you're working a day job right now again this this goes back to what i said about my my problem is i i've been focusing on what i don't have versus what i do have exactly and i think an easy mindset change for anyone who is maybe working a job that they hate right now Mm -hmm. is to go you know this job is a means to an end to give me totally something like that. Totally, right. Like totally, and, yeah. and find the positive in it mm-hmm. because again, if we say, well, we're only going to be happy when we leave this job and get to the next stage, that's, just, that's another, what I'm currently stuck in. I'm right. only going to be, you know, if only like art and I just had millions of followers right, and right. you know, we could just live off doing this podcast mm-hmm. and classes. Like, trust me, that thought has gone through my mind a million times. Me, me too. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, this is it. We, we can do this. And and I'm like, I get so caught up in that that I'd, I'm not happy right now. I'm right. like, I'm like, oh, well, we got to get started on that and we got to do this. And I'm like, oh, well, why am I focused on doing this work? Cause doing my job today, because you know, I need to be over there. And it's mm-hmm. like, oh, well, this is all part of that. Yeah. And like you said, you, you said you, you got mindfulness certified and there was almost an attachment Completely. and a stigma around that. Totally. You're like, you're yeah. like, oh, I'm going to be, like you said, Ram Dass. Like, I, exactly. like I, I've, you know how many times <clears throat> I've had that thought? Yeah. I'm, like, yeah. I'm like, well, what if I can just be the next like spiritual right. teacher? Imagine right. how many people I can help. Right. And I heard um, of this podcast that I've been listening to. I, I need to find the name of it. Uh, but it's this guy, Dr. Chatterjee, as he is. But he had this guy on there. And he asked the guy, and it's been sticking with me. He asked the guy, you know, you've helped so many people. Mm-hmm. And the guy had like wrote a bunch of books. He was a doctor. He'd, he's like, you've helped so many people. Was all that worth it? Because he <clears> you know, <throat> talks about time away from his family and things mm-hmm. like that. And he's, the guy's like, eh. Like he, yeah. he, he literally, he's like, he's like, I'd almost would have rather had more time with my family, right? Than to he has done meaningful work, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that's been resonating with me because, yeah. like I said, I I have a kid on the way, so I'm starting to realize like what is it i actually care about exactly do i want to spend more time doing the thing the the crappy things and hustling and mm-hmm, all that that like mm-hmm. i know it's hard because i i know that stuff's important because mm-hmm. I, I know if you want to make a good living and all that you got to put in the work you can't mm-hmm. just avoid the hard work mm-hmm. but at the end of the day like why am i doing it all it's because I want to create more time to spend with my wife and kid. Like right, that's all right. I really care about. Right. Like I'm like, why? Like I don't care about doing any of this other stuff. Like I just want more time with them. I mm-hmm. want to experience life with them. And my friend said it best to me today. He goes, you know, animals and kids don't care about money. Yeah. They care about your love. Exactly. And they care about your presence. Exactly. So exactly, it's you, the greatest thing. Yeah. You can give a <laughs> it's yeah. like yeah. Well, we're also focused on like, oh, we can give our kids this life where they can travel and they can have whatever they want and they right. can have the new iPad and right. they can, you know I mean? They right. can keep up with their friends and do right. soccer camps and all that. And like right. all a kid really wants for the majority, probably until they're a teenager mm-hmm. <laughs> is, is your love mm-hmm. and your time. Mm-hmm. I, I imagine, I think about it. How many times would you rather have your parent there at a uh, big event in your life mm-hmm. than for them to be working to make money for you to mm-hmm. do something? Mm-hmm. Right. And mm-hmm. there's a balance to that as everything. But I don't want to be the guy that's like, oh, sorry, I'm going to miss your big soccer game mm-hmm. because I've got to go make money here. Right. Like, and, right. and again, a balance of it. Some people are single parents and have mm-hmm. to go. They don't have a choice. And there's there's a bigger picture. It's sure. not all black and white. Mm-hmm. But personally for me, I want to somehow create a life. And if that means me having less stuff, mm-hmm. like, trust me, if, if I don't have the finances to keep up with 
a fancy car or a fancy mm-hmm. house and all the mm-hmm. stuff that I've created as a bachelor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. It yeah. Was, it's funny because my wife's told me, she's like, she's like, uh, you know, you did all these things, like you bought the fancy car, you spent all your money on mountain bikes, all this thing when you were a bachelor right. with thinking about not having kids. With no, yeah, right. Now that you have a kid on the way, I've seen you change that mindset. It's beautiful. And it's like, that's what's important, right? Yeah. And yeah. so we want to we carry on with that. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, there's a lot to fix <laughs> from that. But again, I would rather drive a car that is paid off, mm-hmm. that gets me from point A to point B, than to roll around in class <clears> in style <throat> And have more time with right. my kid. That right. I, I think right. there is more beauty in that than the other way. So. And and it also comes down to what kind of time, you know, because I, you know, my kid is into um, travel hockey, you know, okay. so I see lots and lots and lots of parents who are like, you know, like you'll see the mom at every practice, you know, and all the, you know, but the dad will show up just in the games and stuff like that. And you can tell that they're, you know, they're well off. The kid has all the, you know, all the yeah. equipment and they got, the, you know, they do all the trips and stuff like this, but you can sense that there's not a, a true you know, connection, you know, you can sense that this is just the time that the, the parent has to spare. And, and, and yes, it's, it's the way it is for a lot of people. And I'm not trying to judge anybody that way, but, but, but what I, I guess what I'm trying to drive to is, is back to the, con, the uh, question of, of like, <clears throat> you know, like you're doing these corporate videos, right. That are very unfulfilling to you as far as like the activity and the, and the final product and stuff like that. But that's where we can come back to the idea of mindfulness, and this applies just as much as to our work as it does to our family life, is that it's it's the moment by moment presence with it, right? So so you know, if you say that like, you know, what good is a corporate advertising, you know, video that I'm doing, yeah, that's that's fair. There's no real you know, deep benefit to, you know, to you know filming somebody's, you know, whatever video. But you can still show up as, you know, with that same presence, you can still be the person who you or, or the, 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 the loving and, and kind and, and present person, right? And, and so, so just as a hypothetical, right? Like most videographers, I imagine it's pretty, you know, cut and dry. I'd imagine it's like, you know, almost like an auto mechanic, right? Yeah. Like, you know, you just, it's a client thing, you know, but imagine if one of your clients, you know, after the shoot a week later, he's like, man, that guy, Adam was, you know, I, I, you know, I see the world differently because of the way that he was present, you know, yeah. not that anybody's going to necessarily have that conscious thought, but, but that is always the opportunity for us, hmm. right? So, so that even if we're doing something that's meaningless, we can do it in a meaningful spirit, yeah. right? We can do hmm. it with that spirit of kindness and compassion and, and presence, right? And that's the same thing with the kids, Right. And so, and, and again, like you say, like, I don't want to miss the big soccer game because I have to work, you know, that's fair. And I, I'm struggling with that as well, too. Like I have a day job right now. I work at a a hockey rink, you know, which is, you know, again, not very fulfilling, but then, you know, I, I look at it and I'm like, well, you know, I'm only required to, you know, I run the scoreboard and stuff like that. So I'm only required to like push a button and say, you know, goal scored by number 33 or whatever. Right. But, but I'm up there saying, you know, you know, Panthers goal, unassisted goal scored by number 33, Mike Jones. <laughs> you know, I go like nuts with it. Yeah. And, and I stopped doing it for a little while. And one of the guys, you know, for whatever reason, like uh, one of the refs left and we had a different schedule. So I just was, you know, new guys and stuff. So I wasn't doing that for a few weeks. And one of the players who I don't know him from, I mean, I see him Tuesday nights, you know, yeah. you know, for 15, for 45 minutes. And he pulled me aside. He's like, Hey, how come you don't say our names anymore, yeah. man? We love that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, Oh shit. I never thought of that. You know, these like 20 year old kids, you know, yeah. but, but that's, you know, again, that's just a very small example of what I mean. Like we can always show up that way. And so anyway, getting back to that idea of, <clears throat> you know, this week I'm going to miss my son's tryouts. It's like, it's devastating to me, but I have to work. I have to be able to pay for his hockey. Yeah. So, so it's also, that also is an opportunity for the middle way, right? Mm-hmm. It's an opportunity for me to sit down with him and say, look, this is the reality. Sometimes I'm going to miss your stuff, but every time I can, I'm going to be there. Yeah. 
and mom's going to video it for me when I'm not there. And we're going to make the best out of it, but let him know that it's still like, even though I'm across town in an ice rink, that he's in another ice rink, my heart is there with him. He knows that, you know, because I'm still present for him. And so, and so for me, like my father was never around. And so for me, it's like, you know, when I'm not able to be there, I'm late for a game or something. I'm thinking like, oh man, he's going to feel like I used to feel and so sad. And like everybody else's parents is out there, but not mine and that kind of stuff. But then I realized that he doesn't have that trauma. He doesn't have, you know, I show up and he's like, oh, hey, you know, yeah, like yeah. waving from the bench. Like he's, you know, perfectly happy. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm reading into that, I'm, I'm, you know, projecting my own experience onto his, but he doesn't have that because even though I'm not necessarily there for everything, I'm present when I am there, mm. right? Yeah. And and in all the moments in between, if he, if that makes sense, right? It makes great sense. Yeah. I'll come to you for more parenting advice, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's, I like what you said about showing up because even when you go to like a fast food restaurant, right? Yeah. And you, it's very rare because normally everyone there is like hating their jobs. Like, why am I here? All this. Right. But you get that one like lady who's like, mm-hmm. you know, in her forties or fifties or mm-hmm. a guy is and they just like, they're working and they're happy mm-hmm. and like, they're like a Taco Bell and they make your experience right. at Taco Bell like freaking awesome. Right. You're like, wow, I'm right. going back to this Taco Bell. Like, yeah, what? Right. And I had that recently. <laughs> I had some lady who's just like, she took my order with enthusiasm. She's just like, yeah. like, and it la- left like a lasting impression. Yeah. It's like. You may think like, oh, I'm just, I, I think it's that mindset change, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's exactly what I'm working on right now. And, yeah. and I'm working with a gratitude journal and things like that sure. to try to like, you know, retarget those brain waves that are all very negative focused. For sure. And that comes from childhood and Indeed. a lot of my, listening to my parents be very pessimistic and things like that. If you can retrain the brain almost to anything you're doing, yeah. right? And, Which and, you can. And, and Mm-hmm. There's a, I mean, I heard a Buddhist story and it was like the monk, um, was asked like, who are you? Um, and while it was sweeping and said, well, I'm the sweeper yeah. and he's doing the dishes. Who are you? Well, I'm yeah. the dishwasher. Right. It, it's like, right. you know, if you can be whatever it is you are doing, I'm mm-hmm. the Taco Bell server. Like, right. like you may not think because society has put that, oh, that's not important, but yeah. how many millions of people go to Taco Bell a day? Right. They're there. And you're, you're worth something, right? Mm-hmm. Like you are, mm-hmm. and it, you don't have to put like that worth as to like, oh, I'm not the CEO. Right, I'm not exactly. The, yeah, or the like, manager yeah, even. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Right. That's, that's, I'm, I'm speaking to the peanut gallery. Essentially totally. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to like, I need to put a mirror right in front of me right now <laughs> right, and, and, right, and exactly. say it to myself, right? <laughs> but again, you could easily just do your job and say, oh, goal for Panthers. But if you're like, yeah, goal for number 13, yeah. like someone in that crowd. So, oh, you know what? This is great. The, because we went to Disneyland the other day. Uh-huh. And what a wild place. Yeah. That the characters <clears throat> at Disneyland are taught to show up. And this was, it was actually a baseball player who originally shot, uh, who uh, said this. I can't remember the baseball player's name. Someone's going to know. Um <laughs> But they, they, uh, Disneyland has taken this same concept. But the Disney, uh, the baseball player said, um, well, so, somebody asked him this, and, and they said, "Why do you play so hard at every game?" Mm. And I think you, I think you have quoted this, right? Maybe, it's, I don't it, know. yeah. Not Why yet. do you play so hard at every game? Yeah. And you know, it's like uh, Babe Ruth, right? It's not yeah, Babe Ruth, right, but right. It essentially, it says, "Well, you know." Because someone in the crowd has never seen Babe Ruth play, oh, and I'm butchering this because I know yeah, it's not Babe Ruth, yeah, 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 yeah. so I'm gonna have to fix right, this. Right. Um, but the Disneyland workers are taught you show up to work every day with the excitement and everything because this is yeah. somebody's first time. Yeah, because some four year old kid is yeah, he like is you're there. He or she yeah. is like you know what I mean. They're right. Like this is Disneyland, and so yeah. you want to make that experience I love that the best for everyone. I and love imagine that. if we could show up that way for ourselves every yeah, day. That's the this thing. is our right. first time experiencing this. Right. Even though we've experienced it a thousand times mm-hmm. before, mm-hmm. we may be at, we may be at our fifth, sixth, ten year mm-hmm. of upset, same mm-hmm. job doing the same mm-hmm. thing every day. Mm-hmm. But what if we went in every day and we said this is the first time we're experiencing it? And that's maybe, right. maybe this is someone's first Taco Bell experience. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's I, right. I want to give them the best crunch wrap yeah. I'm hungry now. So <laughs> 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 I want to give them the best crunch wrap supreme they've ever had. <laughs> Every restaurant that I've ever gone back to, it, the food that, doesn't, yeah. the food is good. Right. 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 I, I, I like the food. 
I had this Cuban restaurant during COVID, and this is a little tangent, but I it, the food was amazing. Don't mm. even ask. Oh, it was the best food ever. So it's hard to argue that one. But uh. from day one, I went in there. The owner was in there. He learned my name. Uh huh. It got to one point. I went there, I think, seven days in a row. Yeah, like, I yeah. was like, I was just going back. Because he, he took the time. He came right. over, asked me how my meal was. Right. The right. family was all in there conversing. Like, right. the environment in it's there so beautiful. was so beautiful that I was like, you know, I've had Cuban food for six days in a row. But, like, I'm going back for number seven. Yeah. yeah just because I want to the be there. Right. I want to be there. Right. right. And so I guess you can do that for your kids. You can do that for other people. Mm-hmm. Um, you can do that for your clients and mindfulness practice. You may right. be like, well, I've meditated a million times and I've, um, this is, I, mindfulness is my thing. But like, this is the first time someone's practicing exactly. it. Exactly. This is the first time someone else is hearing the practice. Exactly. And so it's like, even though you've repeated it a thousand times, right. right. it's like, well, this is my first time hearing it. And if you make that experience special, mm-hmm there's a lot of value in that. So Absolutely. I don't even know if this is even connecting to all of it. It but is. It is. It is. No, it's, <laughs> it's great. It's great. Yeah. But but I would also add, though, that it goes the other way. You know, I thought when you when you first brought up Taco Bell, I thought you were going to go the other way because, mm. you know, the customer yeah. can impact the person behind the counter just yeah. as much as the person behind the counter can impact the customer. Mm. And that's really what, you know, again, like in the, in the practice and the skillfulness of mindfulness, it's not like, oh, I'm going to be this way at work. And then I'm going to be this way at home. And then, you know, it's like, I'm just going to be this way yeah. moment by moment. Yeah. And and that's the work, right? Yeah. And so so then, you know, one of my favorite quotes of all time is uh, Louis Pasteur, who was a, a scientist. He came up with the, the pasteurization process, right? And so um, his he was searching for something. I don't remember exactly what it was. He was searching for it in the lab night after night after night, trying to figure this problem out. And he stumbled upon the anthrax virus and mm. subsequently the antidote or the vaccine for the anthrax virus. One of the greatest, you know, discoveries in science. And it was a mistake. It was just yeah. a fluke, you know? And so somebody asked him, like, you know, how how'd that happen? He said, chance favors the prepared mind, hmm. which to me translates, again, that's what mindfulness means. And we show up every moment by moment by moment. And when we recognize that we're not there we're not showing up for ourselves and we just come back and show up and show up and show up and show up and that's when opportunities are going to arise and that's when we're going to be able to you know make the most of the opportunities that arise because we're not chasing after anything we're not like blinded by this you know focus of of like i gotta be this you know Mm. and so so to me that's the whole magic of this and then again like yeah i i you know, I just described to you how, you know, people work with me for 12 weeks, six months, and, and they, you know, they, they, they're a changed person. I talked to them a year later, and their lives are, like, completely different. It's not anything I did. They did the work. But that can also happen at King Supers, <laughs> you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. I can have that same impact on someone just by, you know, instead of, oh, hi, how are you, you know, stopping and saying, how's your family? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And just, uh, not that I know their family, not that it matters what they're going to answer i mean they're not going to go into a conversation like we've had today or anything like that but just that that idea that you know they feel felt Hmm. they feel like they matter to another person even though we don't even know each other's names that is so powerful and you don't do it because of the power of it you do it just because it's good for me and it's good for you yeah you know it benefits all of us right and that, to me, is true happiness. I'm reading this uh, thing you have on the wall here. Happiness, when one's spiritual me- needs are met by an untroubled inner life. Happiness comes when your work and words are of benefit to yourself and others. Mm. I've had that for over a decade. I believe it. Man. I believe <laughs> well, it. But that's the whole thing. <laughs> that's that's the universal truth. Yeah, that's, that's funny that I bought that sign... Yeah, I and think that's probably really, over 10 years ago. <laughs> and that, again, is to me what the Eightfold Path is all about, is, yeah. is the way you live your life, is the way you make the money, is the way you communicate with others. All of these things, are they a benefit to yourself and to others? Hmm. Conversely, is it causing suffering to yourself or yes. others, yeah. right? Exactly. So that's the whole that's the whole shooting match for me. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's good. I mean, I, I love it. It's it's uh, yeah, happiness is a funny thing, right? It's to come it back. Is. It's to come back to that idea of. Yeah, I've kind of always I, I've described it to people who've asked before. Mm. 
to tricking yeah. like what's the like what what is it that we're doing with happiness and i i think what we're doing with happiness is i, I try to say it like this is like we always set the goal post out here mm. right mm. and on that goal post is the words happiness mm. and we say you know as soon as i make it through that goal right i'm gonna be so happy Next thing you know, you you get to that goal and you get the moment of you achieved it, right? You, mm-hmm. It's it's hard because you don't want to like discredit things, but hell, even if you're an Olympian and you win a gold medal, like there's almost got to be another side of the depressing side of, of it. Of course there because is. Because it's yeah. like, this is the highest point, right? right. If that, right. if you were relying on that for mm-hmm. that, right? So mm-hmm. many of us put that out there. Yeah. That's been my thing. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, I just got to win. I got to get this. And then as mm-hmm. soon as I win... Now I need then another win. Exactly. But I need right. another one to keep going, right? So we just like <clears throat> we make our lives and our life becomes this consistent chasing. Yeah. Exactly. It's like it's it's a consistent, it's made up of these small moments, right? right? Because those right. moments are very small. But remember them. We were, were like, oh wow, that big I remember that one time I won the national football sure. championship. Sure. It's like, I'm sure Tom Brady's already talking about coming out of retirement. I'm <laughs> right. sure he is. Because right. he's like how can he not? I, he's fucking depressed. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> like, right. It, it, because when we put happiness out here, mm-hmm. and I, I don't know if Tom Brady's depressed, or <laughs> but I'm sure he's doing all right. Um when we put happiness out here. We're just going to continuous, continuous, mm-hmm. keep moving. We're going to keep mm-hmm. moving that pin. Mm-hmm. And we're going to miss. It's it's essentially that Monday through Friday, right. we're not happy. Right. Saturday and Sunday, we're happy. Right. Monday and Friday, we're not happy. Right. Saturday and Sunday, we're happy. It's, it's just like this consistent. And what we do is, uh, you ever seen the movie Click with Adam Sandler? No. He's got this remote. No, I, was, yeah, oh, I never yeah, saw yeah, yeah. it, yeah. And he, uh, he essentially like... He can like pause, pause the world. time, yeah, and he right. can skip the boring stuff. Right, but then the the, the remote starts going into into automatic mode, uh-huh. and so every time there's a boring moment, or just, he waits till he wants a job promotion because he wants right. to get to that job promotion. Right, right. So it's a pretty profound movie. It like is. I think I watched it as a kid, and that, uh, but uh, his life just becomes on autopilot until he mm-hmm. wakes up one day in a hospital bed. Yeah. And he's like, "What's going on?" Like yeah. he doesn't even understand wow. because he, wow. because he didn't realize that he skipped what was happening what, all the, what was yeah. called life essentially right, right. all these things that we're trying to avoid mm-hmm. sitting in traffic because he mm-hmm. was like he would skip the remote during traffic <laughs> right, right, waiting right. for the job promotion right. all that life is happening that's where life happens that. and exactly. we've, we've had that conversation before yeah. and I think that's a that's a much bigger conversation sure. there and that's why we're trying to learn how to walk in between that middle path because we're, we really are trying to realize you know we don't want to be on too far on this side like i mean if you're gonna go and you're gonna ordain as a monk and you're gonna Mm -hmm. practice that uh, i think there's also a big misconception that that is considered running away or Mm -hmm. that is Mm -hmm. honestly i think becoming the more i look at it becoming a monk and renouncing everything Mm. is got to be one of the hardest things in the entire world to go do absolutely and there's a reason you know other countries put food in their alms bowls and things like that because they are working for the betterment of themselves which is the betterment of the world exactly and when you can see that so I think anyone, this is my big, I was like, oh yeah, I'm just going to go run away to a monastery. There's no mm, running away. No, the problem no. is once you get to the monastery, right. you're going to want to run away from the monastery. Exactly. Because, because you're going to want the Now you're faced with everything. Yeah, because right. what we're in right now is this world full of distractions. Right. That's what we're doing. Our entire right. days are distractions. Exactly. I mean, that's right. what we do, right? It's the reason right. I go golfing. It's the reason mm-hmm. I play video games when I'm mm-hmm. like, it's like instead of sitting down with it, mm-hmm. it's like. So we have to make those times for ourselves exactly. to work on these mindfulness practices right. and all that. But right. anyway, more stuff. We've got to get wrapped up here, but we've got to, we always like to do a little reading at the end of our, our podcasts or our, uh, whatever we're doing. <laughs> so, whatever we call this thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So thank you for tuning in this, this whole time. If you sure. made it this far, um, we're going to pick a page. I'm going to have art. I'll do this one this week. Art's going to do the next one. I have the pocket Pima Chodron. Pima Chodron is a Buddhist nun. She's awesome. This is just like a condensed version from like little snippets from her teachings and books and all that, but called the pocket Pima Chodron. So give us a page here. All right, we got like one all the way up to like 200, I think. 111. Ooh, 111. Let's see what we got, what we got. Always fun to do these and see where they take us. Yeah. All right. It's astounding how, <laughs> how it relates. Obstacles can become our teachers. (laughs) I love it already. (laughs) Obstacles can become our teachers. On the night on which he was to attain enlightenment, the Buddha sat under a tree. While he was sitting there, he was attacked by the forces of Mara, the Lord of Destruction. 
The story goes that they shot swords and arrows at him and that their weapons turned into flowers. What does this story mean? My understanding is that what we habitually regard as obstacles are not really our enemies, but rather our friends. Mm. What we call obstacles are really the way the world and our entire experience teach us where we're stuck. What may appear to be an arrow or a sword can actually experience as a flower. Whether we experience happens... Oh. Whether we experience what happens to us as an obstacle and enemy or as a teacher and friend depends entirely on our perception of reality. Mm-hmm. It depends on our relationship with ourselves. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to read that last part again. Whether we experience what happens to us as an obstacle and enemy or as a teacher and friend depends entirely on our perception of reality. Right. It depends on our relationship with ourselves. There you go. So it's all perception. That's yeah, and that's the acceptance that I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Right. That that's thank you, Pema. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that that's radical awesome. acceptance, right? Of, yeah. Of not oh gosh, that's gonna send us into a whole new podcast. Yeah, right. We better be careful here. <laughs> uh, let's let's but, let's leave it at that. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, totally. no, what, what do you gotta say? What do you gotta say? No, I was just gonna about. say that that it's it's that, you know, like like the, the movie you just described, you know, it's it's the sitting in traffic, you know, that is life. You know, that that is turning the sword into a flower, or or the way we turn that sword into a flower is through accepting this is traffic. What am I gonna feel with this? How am I gonna move through this experience in my life? How can I be curious about it rather than trying to, you know, find something on the radio to distract me from it? Yeah. Right. So anyway. No, I I it's funny. I can't stop myself. Me and <laughs> me and my partner will sit in traffic. And I do it a lot too, where I don't, we don't turn any music on. Right. Like, cool. well, we actually will sit. It's an opportunity and to just talk. Like, and it, yeah, talk yeah. or just even sit in silence. Just, like, yeah. And she's been a big teacher of that. Like, awesome. she's to me is like, she's like, you know, you don't have to consistently fill your right. day with right. something. Cause right. I'm very like, we'll, we'll get back from a trip in an airplane and I'm like, I've got, I'm gonna go play golf right now. Yeah, she's like, right. you just got back. Like, right. Chill. For you wanna minute. sit? Yeah. For like, like, you don't, yeah. you don't have to continue. Like, I'm always trying to fill things. And that goes back to, all the stuff we talked about, right? You mm-hmm. don't have to do that. Like, if that's if you're sitting in traffic listening to this, turn this podcast off and right. drive the rest of the way home right. in silence. Right. And see where it right. takes you. Right. Yeah. Which comes back to happiness. And this is the last thing that I want to say is that, you know, happiness is not some state ne- necessarily, just some state that we're either in or we're not in. It's the way um, uh, Thich Nhat Han describes it and, and others also. It's a condition. Right, the conditions for happiness exist, or the conditions for uh, for happiness are, you know, withheld or blocked from us. Right, and so so it's not about being happy all the time; it's about welcoming what is here and finding happiness within that. Yeah. Right, like finding ha- like, hey, this is awesome! I got stuck in traffic. I get to think for a few minutes. I get to right. turn everything off and be quiet for a few minutes. Right. And that also includes like when we turn on the news and we see the unbearable suffering in the world, right? Like we're not supposed to just be happy by watching that stuff, but we can, you know, we can feel it with compassion and with, you know, with, with the deep feeling of the emotions. And that is part of being happy. Hmm. If that makes sense. No, it it makes plenty of sense to me. At least it's, uh, one of my mantras that gets me through the day, um, is one is I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. There you go. That, that's one. Mm-hmm. Um, the other one is along the same lines, but one of my favorite teachers, Ram Das, to go mm-hmm. back to that, his um, guru said, you know, because he goes to he goes to his guru and he says, why are there all this murder and killing mm-hmm. and all these horrible things that happen in this life? Mm-hmm. And his his guru says, Ram Das, there are no mistakes. Right. The there it's. It is, and that's it's a hard that's a hard it concept it's to grasp. Very hard. It's very hard. But when we're able to grasp that idea of there are no mistakes, mm-hmm. that the universe is the way it is, there's a radical acceptance. And I think for me, I I mean I personally I study Buddhism, um, but I also have my own personal relationship to what I call God or the universe. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And what I've experienced is that when I'm it's almost like Jesus take the wheel yeah, <laughs> like right. is the saying, yeah, right? Is, yeah. is uh, the, when I'm able to 
let go and let God, as mm-hmm. that's another saying. Mm-hmm. We've got all these mm-hmm. little sayings, mm-hmm. but they're all the same in that sense of right. just truly trust in the process. Right. Right. There's so much more peace in that. Right. Like, it's right. so just wild. Be yeah. with it. Whatever's yeah. happening, be with yeah. it. And it's life's been hard yeah. lately. Of course and, it is. Yeah. You know, it can be harder, but it, and I don't even think that's the right way to look at it. But it's just anything I've ever gone through has got me to this point in this conversation and this moment mm-hmm. right here. Right. And tomorrow may be a really hard day, but then the day after might have more beauty. It's like, right. it's just, but it's just that like flow. that, yeah. but it's part of me, but it's just like that movie again, like everything brought you to here. Yeah. The bad days, the good days, the yeah. in between days, the, yeah. the stress, the difficulties, all of that, you yeah. know, you can't just fast forward f- through some of it. Then this wouldn't be. This wouldn't be. Right. right. There'd be no need for us to have this conversation. Right. If, there would be no conversation. If life, to have, if life yeah. had been right. solid and all the experiences we'd had, then, you know, the person who's ever listening to this podcast, why are they listening? Why are they it, listening? Right? Yeah, exactly. exactly. They don't, yeah. they don't want to right. listen to Adam right. and Art talk. Who's Adam and yeah. Art? Right. <laughs> exactly. But but the point is that the person listening is also has also experienced all yes, those exactly. things. Yes, exactly. Right. right. We yeah. all have every single but even the most wealthy, like even the Dalai Lama has rough days. <laughs> you know? He had a very like, rough day. Yeah, life. well, exactly. He went through yeah. something really difficult not too long ago. Yeah. And you know, but he's you know, but that makes it that's part of being the Dalai Lama. It's part yeah. of being you. It's part of being me. It's part of being you. Well, that kind of goes to the the enemies thing because the Dalai Lama, you know, was what I was talking about was him being forced out of his own country and he's never oh, returned sure. since right, a child. Right, right, right. right. And, right. and he says, you know, when asked about China, he mm. said, they're just misguided. Like, they there are my friends. Go. Like, there's, there you go. Right, he doesn't right. harbor any hate towards China right. and they murdered right. his whole family. Like, it, that's, right. that is, you know, the goal. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> We're sure. not all the Dalai Lama, but actually, but here's the thing is, yeah. In Buddhism, the thing people see, they're like, oh, you know, there's there's the Buddha. Well, the thing is, the the beautiful thing about the Buddha, and this is how I feel about, uh, this is how my personal thing with God is too, is that we are all the Buddha. We are all right. part of God, right? right. Like that is right. that when we can understand that, mm-hmm. that we have the same capability mm-hmm. as the Buddha. And like, that's mm-hmm. almost like Buddha came down in that form to show us that your average man or woman or anybody can become right. the Buddha. You are the Buddha. The right. Buddha exists right. already in you, not right. even become. Exactly. No, you are. You're yeah. all, right. all that Buddhism is, is sh- they say shedding the layers. There you go. You're, you're essentially, you're well, wearing a million coats, right? And you're just right. taking them right. off one right. by one right. by one. Right. And you're, mm-hmm. you're trying to come back to what actually is in there. So, there you go. No. Right, no. right. Mm-hmm. No. I love it. And again, it's not about like, you know, we say that, yeah, the, you know, like to be able to look at something like the Dalai Lama does, like that, you know, like China, he doesn't hold that animosity. You know, the reason for that is that, again, the, the conditions of happiness leave once we start, you know, getting into that, right? Yeah. We're creating the unhappiness. And so, but but to us and to you, you know, it's yeah. not about being perfect, right? It's not about yeah. being the Dalai Lama. It's about noticing those moments, little micro moments in which we're not the yeah. Buddha. Right, yeah. which which we're not God, in which we're not accepting, in which we're not kind, in which we're not compassionate, in which those moments where we feel jealous of someone or or you know bitter about something, when we notice that, that's the that's the opportunity to to turn off the radio and say, okay, what is this? Not to say how do I you know fix this or how do I avoid it or how do I you know engage in it, but but rather what is this? Mm-hmm. Let me understand this. Well, you said you said those moments that were not God or the Buddha, but to me, those moments where you are still God. Uh, yeah, because, yeah, but when it doesn't they, feel that yeah, way, it doesn't feel that I mean. way. Right, feeling, right. but that's I think a bigger picture is we. It's it's like when we get caught up and we say we're not doing the things that are fulfilling to go back to mm-hmm. our work stuff, mm-hmm. and we're like, oh well, this isn't fulfilling, and it's like, oh, we're not being, uh, you know, when. I started Buddhism how many times my dad would always say that to me. Oh, it's, it's not very Buddha of you. Yeah, it's not very right. Buddhist of right. you. Exactly. You're angry. It's not very Buddhist exactly. of you. And it's like, you know what? Like, I'm sure the Buddha got angry. Of I'm course. Sure it it's right. just how we, the, the feelings are still there. Right. And it's like, we just, someone who is more mindful and more aware is able to, I, I think that's a good misconception or good point to touch on because people think, well, once we get enlightened or once we, once fixed. we start doing this practice, right, right? I think people get distraught because they're like, well, I've been practicing mindfulness for right. six weeks now and right. I just yelled at my son. Right. And it's like, right. well, yeah, like you, right. you're not going to like magically mm-hmm. fix everything. It's like mm-hmm. in those moments, 
it is same with meditation. It's in those moments where you get lost. It's how you bring yourself exactly. back. Exactly. It's exactly. not about getting lost. Like, yeah, sure. That's the, it's it has consequences happen. on the right. loss if it's a big thing, but you're, you're trying to do it less and less. But when you do get lost, what kind of kindness, compassion, and awareness do you have to come back to that exactly. center moment? Exactly. Right? exactly. Exactly. Yeah. There's a Ram Dass story about that. I know we're trying to wrap up here, but <laughs> um, we could really go for quick. Days. Yeah. Really quick. Though. <laughs> Ram Dass is giving a. He's scheduled to give a talk at some college, and there's some co-ed showing him around, and oh, you know, yeah. yep. and he always very specifically asks for a, a specific kind of a boom mic stand, right? So that the 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 mic stand is over here, and just the microphones in front of him, and uh, and so the girl walks him. This 18, 19 year old girl <laughs> walks him into the. Uh, auditorium and they have just a regular mic stand that's like in front of him and he lost it he like yeah. got pissed off yeah. he was like there's so few things that i asked for you can't even get this right like you know he was, he was ram das like going yeah. nuts about this silly microphone and the way he tells the story i mean only ram das can tell the story the way ram das told oh. stories but but he said it at one point he like heard himself and he just started laughing. Mm -hmm. He just, he like filled the room with his laughter at himself yeah. because he got caught up in it. He got, he became, you know, not Ram Dass anymore. He became that, that, or, or he acted not like Ram Dass for a moment, right? Yeah. And again, it's like, you know, we could feel like, you know, many of us in that moment might try to justify it. Yeah. Might say, well, yeah, but, yeah. you know, you knew better. Or we might try to, you know, somehow, you know, finagle it into something. But what we really, the opportunity is to, again, be curious about it and to say, wow, look, I just veered away from this path. And and that's what you, uh, that's how I take what you mean is that that's how we come back to the path. Mm. Not by saying, oh, well, let me, let me make myself look better here or, or, you know, let me justify what I've done. But no, by acknowledging it and accepting it and, and realizing that I'm human. I'm, even though I'm Ram Dass, I'm still human and I just got caught up in it. And it's hilarious. This is a great moment. Yeah. What an opportunity. This is amazing. Know. If you've never listened to Ram Dass stuff, you got to listen to oh, the yeah. Now podcast. It's Absolutely. so good. It's just teachings from all of his stuff. Um, unfortunately, I discovered him two years after he died right, and something right. like that. But yeah. it was uh, he, I, just just another one that like is so good on that is mm -hmm. that, you know, he talks about watching TV and then a busload of people show up to see him. And he's like, oh, well, got to put on my robe and become Ram Dass. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, right. It's like, it, it's, uh, <clears throat> it, it, you know, you, you try to put on this front almost. Right, right. And it's pretty funny just right. to listen to that. And, you know, it's, it's such a process and you can mm -hmm. the more i listen to ramdas you hear his earlier teachings and you can feel the more of an ego attached totally. thing and i yes. think he even he recognized it like you can feel where there's like almost this falsehood in it and like or he just like became really attached to like this is you know i'm ramdas like mm -hmm. all this thing yeah. and then like as he gets older you just hear i love like some of his teachings in the later years because it just you hear how much letting go happened right. and how much awareness of that ego and he you know became a very powerful spiritual teacher by going through all that, even while spiritual teaching, like, mm -hmm. so it's exactly yeah, right. Yeah. That's it's moment by moment. It's a process. Yeah. yeah. And that's also another good reason to question everyone, everyone question every special, everything. every yes. spiritual teacher, exactly. anybody like that is because, because you never know, like, you know, right. like, listen to the teachings, but take them as your own words and listen to what's right. true, true to yourself. Right. right. And if any teacher tells you that they're perfect or like yeah. that, that's the first, you know, really big red flag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But you know, anyway, uh, yeah. so, Art and I would uh, chat forever. So yeah, we, <laughs> we, we got to get this thing wrapped up and we'll, we'll definitely have more of these. But thank you so much back for to our day tuning jobs. in. Yeah. Got, yeah, back to the day jobs. Got, er got errands to run. I got a, I got a different hat to throw on. <laughs> um, but yes, it's been been great chatting with you again. Dude, and absolutely. Feels really happy. Like, feels like a comfortable jacket, you know, that yeah. we put on. To there's your, there's our moment of happiness right now. Yeah, exactly. Now we got to be careful. Don't set our goal towards no. next week's podcast. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. Just a lot in between. So thank mm -hmm. you guys um, for tuning in. We really appreciate it. And if you like, this hit like subscribe and follow smash us that on, like yeah, button. smash that like button because you know we're trying to be ram das 2.0 that's <laughs> right we want to have our picture on one of these little yeah, mini books right, you right, know right. you can make that happen <laughs> <laughs> and for a small donation <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much thank you everybody Thanks. have a great day